Anura Kumara Disanayaka has been sworn in as the new president of Sri Lanka. This comes after an unprecedented runoff victory in presidential elections held on Saturday. Counting concluded on Sunday evening. In his inauguration address, Disanayaka vowed to bring clean politics and revive the country's economy. We have a deep understanding that we have got a challenging country. Our politics must be cleaner than this. There is a need for a political culture that people expect. We will commit ourselves to that. The public have a very negative view of politicians and politics. Disanayaka becomes the ninth person to hold Sri Lanka's powerful executive presidency created in 1978 when a new constitution expanded the office's powers. Disanayaka's coalition is led by the Janata Vimukti Peramuna or People's Liberation Front, a Marxist party that waged two unsuccessful armed insurrections in the 1970s and 80s. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was one of the first to congratulate Disanayaka on his victory. Disanayaka replied, saying, and I quote, together we can work towards enhancing cooperation for the benefit of our people and the entire region. India's High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Santosh Jha, also met the president-elect and conveyed greetings from India's leadership. As Disanayaka takes over as president, there are signals of more political flux to come. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena has resigned and the cabinet stands dissolved. Gunawardena's resignation may open the way for Disanayaka to call for a fresh parliamentary election. Disanayaka's JVP party has just three seats in parliament and it remains to be seen what form the new government will take. Earlier in his first address as president-elect of Sri Lanka, Disanayaka called for a restoration of the people's voice as a critical step towards advancing the country. He had said parliamentary elections should be held in accordance with the will of the people to move the nation forward. There was a need for a government with a mandate from the people if you want to rescue the country from the crisis. We know in the recent past the mandate was distorted. The distortion of the people's mandate affected the parliament and other institutions beyond that. The people's mandate that is needed to take this country forward is being established. That was the main point of the presidential election. And I think the general election should be held immediately after. Disanayaka takes office as the country seeks to recover from a severe economic crisis that led to shortages of essentials such as food, medicine, cooking gas and fuel in 2022. Though there have been signs of economic recovery, the cost of living crisis has hit a large section of Sri Lankans hard. His promise to renegotiate a relief package from the International Monetary Fund is believed to be one of the biggest factors that brought him favor from the public. Let's now get the latest from Sri Lanka and our correspondent Dasunia Thoda has sent us this report from Colombo. The resignation of Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena now paves the way for a caretaker cabinet along with a new Prime Minister to be appointed by President Anura Disanayaka. According to party sources, these appointments are expected to be made towards some point of time tomorrow or even the day after. The people across the island are hopeful that President Anur Disanayaka will deliver on his key campaign promises, which include the holding of a fresh election, which would be the general election, towards some point later this year. Stay with me on as we bring you the very latest reporting from Colombo. I'm Dasmiya Kauda. For all the latest news, download the WeOn app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.